with Start Speak, we have Ian Yip. Uh, Ian's worked for organisations globally on cyber security initiatives and projects, particularly in the areas of strategy and transformation, identity and access management, data protection, threat management, governments, risk and compliance, and API management. He's currently the Chief Technology Officer Asia Pacific for McAfee. I'd like to pass to Ian. Thank you. Good um, afternoon, I can say morning, uh, and thank you for having me. Um, so IoT, exciting, really exciting. All of you are looking at the session now and going, ah, security, right? Uh, now, I understand why that is. The truth is, for those of us trying to secure the world, sounds like a grandiose grandiose mission, but we are. Um, we have a reputation problem. All of you sitting there going, ah, oh, security. It's because too often you've got a security person saying you can't do something, right? Now, in truth, those of us trying to figure this stuff out are here to allow all this exciting stuff to happen, but to do it safely. That's actually all we're trying to do. And if you think about it in the mindset, um, that's really how it becomes successful. So let me start off with that, right? And that's not my quote. Uh, I think Picasso might have said it, the best artists steal. So I stole this, but I do like it. Today's world, smart does mean insecure, right? There are a whole bunch of issues with, which I'm not gonna get into my Esteemed co-panelists might get into it. Uh, I'm, I work for McAfee, so we are both a consumer protection company for security and also enterprises. So we help all of us try and stay safe and we also try and help businesses keep themselves safe so that we in turn stay safe because ultimately we're all customers of a whole bunch of large businesses. And in, in thinking through this stuff, there's actually a lot of threats out there. We have a, one of the largest global threat intelligence databases globally and um, every second, we get four new threats. There's a whole bunch of stats there which I'm not gonna get into, which means by the time I'm done with this, there'll be about a thousand new threats we've just cataloged. Now, if you look at the way threats have evolved in the age of just computers, laptops, desktop servers, uh, and the threats that they're exposed to, they are, they are going up exponentially. You add mobile to it, that's even a steeper curve. And then you start thinking about IoT, and the Wild West that is. Now, we, if you, you've just projected, it is unfathomable how we want to protect it. So the biggest challenge for those of us trying to figure it out is how do you protect that in the threat landscape that is ever evolving and moving even faster and the more unknowns and moving parts there are, the more complicated this to protect against. Now, the, the biggest issue we're trying to deal with here, particularly in consumer technology, and IoT is this. Uh, you, they all know what a botnet is. So a botnet effectively is a bunch of devices, computers that just fire internet traffic or, or network traffic at something just to basically make it not function. So if you can take website off site by just getting a botnet and just denial of service attack uh, against it. If you think about it, if, if my TV works the way it's supposed to work, do you really care that it's part of a botnet? Not really. It works. And if for some reason it stops working, you buy a new one. It's the planned obsolescence model that uh, Steve Jobs and now Tim Cook has uh, kind of made us all have to be used to, right? So that's the challenge. Ultimately, this is a cultural problem. To care, we have to make it feel personal. Now, IoT, more than anything else ever, has the best chance to make security feel personal for us and make us care. And in being in this business for a little while, the most effective way of making security stick when we talk to anybody is what's in it for you, so what? We, need, we always need to answer the so what question. So in the world of IoT, it gives us that ability to answer the so what question much more easily than we have been in the past. So in that respect, it's great. Despite the complexity, it's great for us. But it brings a whole bunch of challenges, right? There's two key ones we care most about in IoT. Back to the whole TV thing. TV is part of the botnet, no big deal. But most companies and those of us out there are freaking out about 
Things like the electricity grid being taken offline because we don't know how to secure things. So if you speak to a utility company that provides critical infrastructure, there's a thing called operational technology, which it's been running for years. If you ever heard the word SCADA system, they run the actual uh, computing power that, that actually power runs the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the generators and, and the, the plants and all that kind of stuff. Those are, have been safe in the past because they've been air-gapped. Air so the biggest risk that IoT introduces to that is the air gaps are effectively going to be gone, but there's no control and governance over that. Security people don't know. And in a lot of cases, the, the business themselves and the people running these environments don't know that these devices are now smart and hence have introduced a weak point into, say, a critical infrastructure control center. So that is one angle that makes us absolutely care. TVs, not so much. This stuff, electricity goes out. Everything else goes out, right? The other aspect is, is privacy. Uh, Alex, oh no, sorry, um, Mattel. Who, I don't know if you all heard this. Mattel tried to launch a, an Alexa. Alexa is, um, I think, Amazon's version of a smart assistant. It might be Google's. I, I'm getting my names mixed up. No, it's, it's Amazon's. So Mattel tried to launch Aristotle, which is the kid's version of uh, Alexa. So a smart assistant for helping take care of kids. Now, all the futuristic stuff that we saw in the previous presentation is all great, right? The issue with that is there's a lot of privacy implications. So all Mattel did was say, okay, well, we can't answer all these privacy questions being fielded or being thrown at us, so we're just not selling. So they're actually taking it offline. They're not selling it because there are a lot of privacy concerns. Now, the promise of doing all that is it all makes sense, but without the security and privacy considerations, there are a lot of things we cannot do simply for safety. This, this week, by the way, happens to be sm stay smart online. And a lot of these considerations for life, for family, for kids, for, for you know, th the safety of humans uh, are very front of mind this week. And uh, the Minister Dan Tian is going around the country talking all about it. And I actually got to go to Melbourne tomorrow and uh, talk to a whole bunch of companies about it as well. But privacy is a key issue we've got to deal with. And IoT, we talked about data, right? The amount of data it, pr it produces that can be used in unforeseen ways to potentially be used against us in future is also going to go up exponentially and increases the risk of us being compromised. Uh, I'm not going to read this. <laughs> this is slightly technical um, for a slightly more technical audience, but the, the reason security is so difficult in IoT for all these reasons. That if you read a whole bunch of stuff, it gets very complicated. The list is very long. Effectively, it's low power. So if you just take cryptography for a second, to encrypt something takes a fair amount of compute power. When you've got things all over the place that have not very much compute power at all, how do you encrypt stuff? And how do you encrypt it to a level that is sufficient to maintain confidentiality and privacy and integrity, right? And there's a whole bunch of other things around transport protocols, there's lots of competing ones. How do you manage the lifecycle management? That means how do you keep these things up to date or do you just swap them out? It's very difficult to swap them out when you've got tens of thousands of devices so if you want to keep them secure, you've got to figure out how to patch them. That's not so easy. And that, by the way, is not solved. Um, key challenges, oh, sorry, common weaknesses are these, generically these areas. Um, and they always keep coming up. Uh, the IoT Alliance of Australia has a security working group, which Matt ha happens to be the chair of. I mean, they're, they're working on a set of standards and, and certifications for minimum levels that security technologies have to meet in IoT, the US Congress, I think, or, or Senate, is trying to pass a bunch of regulations that mandate security be built into IoT devices as a baseline. Now, without regulation, this is not going to happen. That's why it makes it so difficult. And normally, it's these things that are the weak points for attackers to get into IoT devices. And the other challenge companies have to deal with is protecting the IoT part of the enterprise and also protecting the enterprise itself from the IoT environment. So there are two ways they need to look at it. Effectively, we call it adap an adaptive trust environment. So the message effectively is companies and all of us need to focus on resilience, not security. We were having a discussion earlier on. It's, there is no 100% security. There is no 0% risk. You're always wearing some. So it's how much risk are you willing, willing to wear and how do you recover from it? Um, so these are the key defense guidelines if you want to think about how you want to protect. So I talked to a lot of companies about protecting their companies against 
IoT devices, smart things. And these are very high level guys. There, there is more detail behind this, so we generally get into discussions, but I've kind of condensed it into this. Resilience, trust, confidentiality, unpredictability, access to privacy. So basically just assume your IoT environments can be compromised at all times, and then figure out how you protect against that. And take a picture, I'm not gonna go through this again. The message here is to protect against it because you assume a level of compromise at all times, so you need to think like an attacker. An attacker tends to do these things. They prepare, so they kind of scout your environment, they compromise some machines, but they don't attack you yet. At some point, they'll dwell for long enough that they do, because they go through reconnaissance, military. You gotta figure out what's out there, and then they attack you. The question is whether you realize when they've attacked you. And then finally, they'll actually execute the attack, and you've gotta deal with it. So, my time is up. With that in mind, um, any questions you have, please say for the panel, but uh, thank you for your time. Thank you.